Hey guys, hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play. Uh, this is a game that I've actually, I haven't known about for, you know, a huge amount of time. This was mentioned to me by um, someone in my Discord. I can't remember whether it was the Games Librarian or whether it was Reader of Jewel Sandwiches. Could have been Alex Fails. Uh, one of those guys, actually, I'm pretty sure. It directed me to this game called Deep Fear We're on the Sega Saturn. Uh, I never had a Sega Saturn. Nope, we don't want to see any of this cheesy ass stuff. Um, there we go. Hopefully that will stop it. Yeah, so I never had a Sega Saturn. Um, and I found out about this game called Deep Fear, which apparently was Sega's attempt at creating a survival horror game. And apparently it's not bad however you do need a sega saturn to play it they are disgustingly expensive these days uh and this game uh, only came out in europe and japan i believe it skipped the states um and it was only released in in quite a small oh god here we go quite small uh quantities so this game is also disgustingly expensive so emulation was the only option which is fine i don't mind that I'm, I'm happy to emulate now sega saturn emulation is a big hot steaming bowl of dog shit in my experience uh it took me probably about three weeks of trying to actually get this game to work um it didn't take too long to get it technically running but to get it into a state where it actually worked and was playable and all of the features worked and you know we weren't running around with missing heads and sound glitches and stuff yeah it took about three weeks maybe a little bit more uh to get it running uh to the point where i almost said sod it i'm just gonna buy a sega saturn and all the relevant cables uh because I've always wanted one for my collection anyway. But then I had a heart attack when I saw how much Sega Saturn's cost. And then my soul left my body when I saw how much this game cost. Do you remember when collecting uh, games for retro systems? Do you remember when that used to be fun and accessible? And, you know, it wasn't necessarily cheap, but it was doable, you know. You never had to pay hundreds of pounds for old systems. I remember when a GameCube, going off on a bit of a tangent here, I remember when a, a GameCube was about 20 pounds, less than that. Yeah, good luck trying to find one for less than 100 these days. A GameCube, it's not even rare. There's millions of them. Uh, Sega Saturns, I remember uh, when we was moving on to the PlayStation 2 era. Uh, and the Dreamcast era. There were literally people throwing Sega Saturns in the trash. Now, you 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 better you better get that uh, that checkbook out there, Sonny Jim, because you ain't you ain't getting one for a reasonable price. Anyway, enough of waffling. Uh let's get into Deep Fear. So it's survival horror underwater. But it is not an exact rip of Resident Evil, they're kind of doing their own thing with this game. Uh, this is going to be blind. I have played like the first, oh, I don't know, 15 minutes of this game. I haven't even found a monster. I haven't even found a gun and shot at anything yet. Um, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, I have, I am playing this with a 8-bit Doe uh, controller which is basically an exact replica of the Sega Saturn controller. It's just new and it's wireless, which is really fucking fantastic. It's actually meant to be for Mega Drives, but it's the six button. And considering this, the controllers would be exactly the same. It's all good. Uh, it also has the L and R buttons as well. So perfect little retro wireless controller for playing Sega Mega Drive and Saturn games. Anywho, we're using the Modefin emulator, I believe. There's no bells and whistles. There's no settings. There's nothing. All you get with Modefin is that. No graphical enhancements, as far as I can tell. Um, it does have save states, though. And we can rewind, which is curious. Um, 
But apart from that, it is it is what it is. So let's go into deep fear. And forgive me for drinking the uh, apple juice. <laughs> yes, uh, apple juice. Standard time, 18 hours and 37 minutes, an unidentified flying object emitting a regulatory signal crashed into the Pacific Ocean. This is Rainbird. Eldridge, do you read? This is Eldridge. Chief! You don't have to yell, Mookie. I can hear you just fine. It's an emergency. Sharon's drowning in the e pool. Come quickly. I'm right above you. I'll be right there. Hurry, Chief! Okay, so, uh, well, that was a load of stuff, wasn't it? Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently some UFO unknown object fell from space which looked like an actual space capsule not very alien at all uh, we're now in the water uh, there was a boy that was launched to I guess recover it which apparently was in a facility under the sea I don't know uh, if you couldn't understand the radio chatter uh, because it was very garbled and low quality and badly mixed with the audio. Don't worry, neither could I. So, there we go. Anywho, 
it's a picture of Stella. Her smile never seems to change. Now, that's quite cool. However, we have two very polar opposite art directions going on here. We have the, for a 90s game, very realistic looking CG uh, animation, which is fine. Uh, but then you have some kind of like anime drawing thing representing a photograph. Yeah, it, it doesn't contrast very well, but hey, whatever. So the C button seems to uh, examine things and we can run around with the B button by holding it down, which is nice. So we have a first aid kit. Uh, we've obtained a first... How many first aid kits are here? Uh, can we... Right, yeah, so start brings out for many. Uh, we we have seven. Resuscitation. How many first aid kits are here? You can't hold any more first aid kits. Right, so apparently those stations hold unlimited amount of first aid kits. Uh, sure. Right. Uh, did I just use another one? No. So, from what I can understand, the Z button uh, is a quick select item, which is... Uh, we have a grenade set as that now, uh, and that's an air grenade. Air, apparently, from what I have read, is an issue in this game. So we have an A97 grenade with compressed air. It restores a given amount of air to a room. It's kind of interesting. It's going to be a bit of an interesting mechanic there. Resuscitation kit restores your HP fully. Uh, I don't know if that means if we die it brings us back. Or if it's just a full heal. Not sure. So this just recovers your HP a little. Which, okay. Fair enough. Right, so let's get out of here. We also have a map. The map is... Uh, it's not the best map. Let's just say that much. Air over 20%. Okay, cool. Fine. I'm sure one of these buttons is like a quick map. B seems to be go back. The go back button. Yeah, so if we push Y. So I'm not sure if we're going to be uh, dealing with aliens or something. It's the AS. It only operates in case of emergency. Oh. But we can save our game. So that seems like a reasonably good thing to do here. So you can see I have already tested the game to make sure the emulator actually works. And uh, apparently it seems to be okay. It's a fireproof suit for the ERS. Excellent. Right, well, now apparently our friend's down here is dying, so maybe we should, uh, you know, go deal with that. Seems like a good thing to do. Nice bit of animation. Chief. Hello. It is I, Chief. Chief! <laughs> Did you forget it's April Fool's Day? You, you know, we don't have time for these fun and games. Sorry, Chief. The mood around the big table had been kind of stuffy lately. So, I had to play a joke before going crazy. What do you mean, stuffy? You were just transferred here a week ago. So, you may not have noticed, but it's been especially stuffy lately. The army people have been really uptight. Hmm... Roger. Seabox automatic pilot system off. Seabox, play ball. This time mermaid may be waiting for you. Yeah, I wish. If only they were real mermaids. <laughs> yeah, definitely. What the... What was that? Hey, stop! Seabox, do you read me? Seabox, what's wrong?
attention please. Would ERS John Mayer immediately report to the CCD area deck room? I repeat, would ERS John Chief, Mayer I think they need you. That was his emergency call. I wonder what happened. I'd better go. <laughs> hey, Chief, you got a cold? You could say that. John, take care of yourself. Thanks. Okay, so we have to go up on deck because something called the Sea Fox, which looks like a huge submarine, has just crashed because the captain was horny for mermaids. Uh, okay. Uh, the captain apparently got shot, or so we heard, anyway. Hmm, okay. Can we... Is this submarine here? I wonder if there's anything we can do with this submarine. Doesn't look like it, unfortunately. Oh! Ride the little... Uh... Yes? How interesting. Oh! can actually get in this little ship. You've obtained emergency, an emergency aid. Okay, what does that do? So, an emergency aid recovers your. Okay, all right, recovers your HP a lot. So we've got blue, orange, and red. So blue is like a small first aid kit. Yeah, emergency aid is a pretty big first aid kit. And I guess a resuscitation kit basically brings you back from the dead. Question mark. All right. I mean, I suppose we can have a little skulk around here. There doesn't appear to be a huge amount here, though. Ah. I'm guessing we're going to be using that a little bit later on. Does kind of make sense. You alright there, guys? You got anything for me? You don't, don't you need to hurry to the deck? Well, maybe. I, I don't know. Apparently, we've got a cold as well. But, uh... I don't know really what that's about. I don't actually want to talk to you. I'm just trying to search the area. Well, I guess we can't search anything. Is there anything down here to search? No. Doesn't appear to be like uh, a quick turn or anything like that either. Now, I'm pretty sure when I was first testing it, I thought I found air grenades here somewhere. Uh, uh, maybe not. Oh well, I thought I found some extra air grenades. It doesn't matter. Anyway, let's go to the deck, wherever that is. Another air grenade. That's going to bother me now. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I found them somewhere else. Okay. Now, I've had to mute my microphone during cutscenes just because I am laughing way too much about the, vo the, the voice acting. It's killing me it, uh, you guys you didn't see nothing yet I mean technically it's a little bit better than Resident Evil 1 standards but it's very inconsistent like from what we've heard so far hasn't been terrible but uh, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen <sighs> just keep watching the apartment area okay well I guess we're not going to the apartments are we no time to go to the bar. I'm talking about going to the bar. I'm going to uh, enjoy my apple juice. Uh, those Irish know a thing or two about making apple juice. Alright, so this is the control deck. Oh, God. This. This guy. Oh, my God. I remember this. Right, so once we've finished here in this room, I haven't gone any further in the game than this. All on. Oh, there we go. Oh dear, I need to meet my mic. Mayor, we've got a serious situation. What's the problem? A while ago, the Sea Fox, which was just getting ready to depart, crashed into the Navy area. Crashed? What happened? We don't know yet. I asked Dubois, the designer, to come too. Oh, there's no problem with my Sea Fox system. No accident should have occurred. Oh! We can't get through on the wireless to either the Sea Fox or the Navy area. We have no idea what's going on over there. This is terrible! My masterpiece is ruined! Oh, what am I gonna do? The rescue force has been contacted, but they can't make it for a while. Do you want the ERS to go in? The Navy area is top secret and out of your jurisdiction. We don't have a choice. I want the ERS to go check it out in the Little Shark. 
We're ready to leave any time. Au revoir. The Navy area diagram. The Navy area has an emergency call which you can come out of. First, find Dr. Weisberg. This is the top priority. Next, move the Navy area and connect it to the big table. That'll be all. Copy. Fine. I'll give this to you. The Navy area level one key. Get ready right away. I'll do my best. I don't want any word of this leaking out. There are civilians here, and we don't want to start a panic. Understood. Jesus Christ. That Dubois, whatever his name is. I mean... <sighs> Resident Evil, right, got a pretty bad rap when uh, it first boss, uh, busted onto the scene. Uh, way back when, with its hammy-ass voice acting. And I mean, primarily the first game. I mean, you know, Resident Evil 2 and 3, although, it, you know, it wasn't a masterclass in voice work. It, it was, you know, it was okay. But the first game was bad, right? Uh, lovably bad, might I add. Um, it gave it a very hammy, cheesy kind of feeling. And, uh, you know, looking back, it wouldn't be the same without it. But <sighs> it's quite often on, uh, well, quite close to the top of top 10 worst voice acted games of all time. They didn't play Deep Fear, did they? They, they did, no, mm -mm, they did not play Deep Fear. Right, so I guess we've got to go back to our submarine. I'm counting on you for the Navy area. This is where you show what ERS is made of. I don't even know what ERS is, but you got it, boss. How can this happen? Somebody must have set us up. So I guess he designed the Sea Fox submarine or something. Uh, sure, I suppose. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like there's any goodies around here, so I suppose we're going to go head back to our submarine, which hopefully isn't going to horribly crash somewhere. Now, we've got a keycard as well, and I think I know what that's for. Actually, I take that back. I have no idea what it's for, but if I had to guess, in one of these rooms that we could potentially search, there is a weapons locker. I wonder if it's for that. Is it in here? Uh, no, this is a conference room, apparently. Okay. Well, is there any lootables here? Doesn't look like it. Schedule for next month's evacuation drill was posted. Yeah, well, uh, it's a bit late for that. Cancel all your plans for next month, because... Uh, oh, hello. I think we're all about to die. Freeze and preservation of humans. Right, and I will say, I don't know whether it's the emulation, just the sake of Saturn's resolution, my dyslexia, everything combining together. Uh, this is the only uh, file that I found, and I'm finding this very difficult to read, but I will try and persevere anyway. In 1973, the British Interplanetary Society announced Project Dalius, I think that says. It's like so many of the letters like just meld together, which is kind of what it's like having dyslexia. But this is actually the game doing it, which is kind of like a personal little uh, fuck you to me. Much appreciated, Sega. Uh, this was de uh, a design study for sending a probe past Bernard Star, which is about 9.5.9 uh, light years away, in the constellation of uh, 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 that word. Uh, in this project, a 54,000, well, 54,500 ton spacecraft with huge pulse microfusion rockets set out on its 43 year to Bernard Star. Its cruising speed would cruising speed would reach 13% of the speed of light before its fourth year away from our solar system. 13% the speed of light? That's actually really fast. Uh, 
nearly half a century is a, is a long way to travel, especially for humans. Not only are food and maintenance important, but the biggest problem is age. If a 20-year-old uh, astronaut were to go up, he would be 70 by the time he reaches his destination. There's no guarantee that he will live that long. In order to artificially control a living organism's life, researchers are studying cold sleep. This is a means of freezing and preserving life. Interesting. Okay. Originally, this method was thought of for humans who have died so that they may be resurrected in the future. But in present times, there is no such technology. This is simply a fairy tale for now. There have been reports of success... Su see that? Of success? But it more looks like sukkakababa. Success in resurrecting life. Although in 1986... Very good year. Um, you know, year of my birth. Excellent. A American scientist was able to bring his pet dog's body temperature down to 10 degrees. Stopping the dog's heart and brain. Bringing the dog to a dead state. After seven hours, he then brought the dog back to life by giving it an electric shock. Similar types of experiments have succeeded on chimpanzees as well. However, the maximum time limit for these experiments was seven hours. This experiment did show the possibility of cold sleep. But when it comes to a matter of decades, not hours, further studies will be needed. Atomic biology professor Steve O'Brien. Okay, so they're experimenting with cold sleep, I guess, on people for a space mission to the Bernard Star. All right. So how does that create monsters and zombies? Unless there are aliens in this game. Maybe it's aliens. We do like aliens. We like shooting aliens. Right, that was the conference room, I believe. This one. Yeah, this is where we started. Yeah, this is the ERS room. Uh, I don't... Can we... Yeah. So we still can't use that yet. Alright. Well, let's head downstairs. Now, we can actually uh, explore this downstairs room as well. And it's good to know that we can actually board that sub. Because, you know, we, we actually need to board that sub. So, oh, hello. Cheryl was worried that you were mad. I'm not mad. More importantly, Mookie, how's the little shark? Best condition. Like the Yankees in 96. Why? What's up? But that reference is lost on me. An accident in the Navy area. We're the first to go in. You mean we get to go in and check out the Navy secret weapons with our own eyes? Hey, this is no joke, Mookie. You've got an important job to do. I'll fill you in later. Oh, God. Yes, sir. Oh, God. It's so bad. Okay, so I guess we're not going to go try that card out anywhere else. <sighs> yeah, so the dialogue is absolutely trash. But that's okay. I have to expect these things. I think if it was good, it would be disappointing. Let's be honest. Okay, Mookie. Let's slide on into home. Hurry up and get out, Mookie. <laughs> I, th I thought he was called Mookie. Is he really referencing himself in third person? Where's the key, Chief? You mean this? Of course he means. Thanks. I'll go first. Can't wait to get a look at the top secret weapons. Yeah, right. Me too. It's gonna be fun. Oh, we have the timer ticking down apparently. 
All right, I guess that's air. Let's go fully follow Mookie or whatever his name was. Oh shit. Apparently this room doesn't have any air. The oxygen circulation system is broken. Activate the AS or else it's going to be tough. Uh, okay. Air system? Okay, let's hurry. Uh what do you mean let's hurry? Okay, so if we activate the air system that gives us a little bit more air in the room. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Right, I'm going to save the game because we are out of time. Oh, would you look at that? So we have system memory and we have cartridge memory. Very interesting. Uh, I'm not really sure how well this uh, emulator saves things, so I'm going to be using as many saves as I possibly can. Uh, we're going to be save stating it as well. Uh, I, I, don't, I think we only have one save state. I, I don't know. But this game looks interesting anyway. Um, I guess we're about to find something down here. Um, I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine. The characters seem, well, as generic as they come. I mean, Mookie, if that is his real name, seems to have some kind of mental deficiency. Uh, it seems to be, you know, talking about himself in the third person, which is always raises an eyebrow. He also seems very eager and uh, talks in a very strange way, but then everyone seems to talk in a very strange way in this game. Yeah, looking forward to this. Really looking forward to this. Not sure how I'm going to get on with this air mechanic. This sounds very stressful. <laughs> but I guess we'll see. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And as always, till next time.